come on like a dream. Peaches and cream, the lips of that strawberry word. You're 16. You're good. And you're mine. Mine, oh mine. Your old ribbons and curls. Well, who but a girl? Eyes that sparkle and shine. You're 16. You're beautiful. And you're mine. Well, you're my baby. You're my pet. We fell in love on the night that we met. I touched your hand, my heart went pop. You knew when we kissed, we could not stop. We came out of my dreams and into my arms. And now you're my angel divine. You're 16. You're beautiful. And you're mine. All oh, mine. You're 16. You're beautiful. And you're mine. Someone at the studio heard a recording of this song and said this would be perfect for Annette to start her singing career because she was very popular as a, a little dancer and occasionally sang a little song. Somebody at Disney heard Somebody at, at Disney heard this, this one song called Tall Paul, He's My Old. And it went like this. Chalking on the sidewalk, writing on the wall. Everybody knows it. I love Paul. Big hit. Then we did, we had to follow that up. We had Italian it, all Italian. <laughs> <laughs> then we did Dance in It, and that was all dance music, and we did that album, and they all were successful. And she kept saying, What are you going to do next? Bass in It? And I could do after that, we will have to do Kitchen It. <laughs> well, it was, well, we had a wonderful time. Among other things, we laughed a lot together. She was uh, wonderful. and. We had a wonderful musician named Tootie Camarada. He was our arranger conductor. And he and Tootie and Annette and Bob and I would just fall apart laughing and come up, come up with songs for her. And they were all kind of fun songs. Was she able to handle the whole teen stardom thing? Was oh, so difficult for so many of Superbly. She was so down to earth. She never took it so seriously. She'd always say, why me? Why do they? I'm not a very good singer. I'm not a, you know, but she, you know, she just was honest with herself. But they loved her. She was her honesty and her sincerity and her her uh, unaffectedness was the thing that made people love her so much. And uh, aside from the fact she was gorgeous, she was a beautiful young girl. Yeah. So all those things, you know, helped. But a lot of beautiful, gorgeous young girls take themselves quite seriously. I don't stop. And, and, and she was not like that. She was just the opposite. And uh, God knows we miss her. But she's she's my lucky star. She always will be. And, and it was through a net from each other that we met Walt Disney, because Walt decided at one point he was going to put in that, because of her popularity as a rock and roll singer now, he was going to put her into a, uh, a film and he was needing a song. He said, get those two young fellas that are writing these cute songs. The young fellas, you know. At that time, <laughs> how, old, how old were you at that time? I, I was in my early 30s then. Right. Like, the long, so. And then you brought the bottom, is that a little old? A couple Bob, years old. Bob, two and a half years, yeah. my senior. Yeah. So basically what happened was, uh, we were asked to write a song for Annette for the film, and we did, and brought it in, we played it for this uh, record man who, who was the guy that we asked the, the, in the first place, and he said, great, now Walt's got it here. So he said, Walt, who is it? Walt Disney, of course, he's going to put this in his movie. So he said, Walt Disney, well, you've got to get somebody to sing it for him. I mean, you know, he said, oh, no, he likes to hear it in the rough. Well, he likes to hear it. So we were ushered into the great man's office, and terrified, absolutely terrified. And the piano was facing a wall, so I would be playing it like, like this. <laughs> Not easy to demonstrate, particularly to an icon. You know, this, but he was so wonderful. He was sweet. I remember when he first walked into the office, he says, are you fellas really brothers? Because, you know, in the old days when I was in Bordeaux, I was a kid, I was in Bordeaux, we found a couple of cars 
buddy of mine and I, and he said, the Johnson Brothers. So we just called ourselves the Johnson Brothers. It sounded good. And we do song and dance stuff. So uh, we said, oh, no, sir, no, Mr. And he said, call me Walt. So we were, you know, he didn't like to have formality. He was very down to earth and stuff. So we played the song, and he liked it. And he gave us another assignment right away. And we started writing songs for various productions of his. And so he became sort of the house, what we would think of as a house composer, right? He worked for the yes. Disney, and he would say, okay, get the Sherman guys in here, you've got to write, you've got to write a song for this. So you were working on more than one song at once. Right? Oh, we were actually inundated with wonderful assignments. And, you know, it's like having the fun of doing it, because I'm one of these lucky guys, that, and my brother too, that we, what we did for a living, we loved doing. So it was like just all these fun things to do. And I remember the very first... Uh, a uh, major big picture that we did was a, a picture called The Parent Trap. And a wonderful gift of the little girl named and, and Nat and Nat, this little part. She played it to her own twin sister. And we wrote a little special song for her, became a number one hit. It was like you hear that one? It goes like this. <laughs> How was it going? I remember, now you see now. Uh, isn't that funny? I'm, I'm thinking about Annette now, all of a sudden I'm getting it. So, I'll get it in a minute. Oh, yes, it, it goes, let's get together. So forgive me if I, I'm just thinking a little bit about her now. You know. 